somehow, even though it was shipped in this thing, my original 1800X review sample from AMD was damaged in transit. But the good news is they sent me a new one, a new Ryzen 7 1800X, which is uh, actually not in here, it's in here, in my new AMD rig, along with a brand new AM4 socket motherboard, courtesy of MSI. You've got the X370 X Power Gaming Titanium motherboard. So I've got an AMD rig, I've got an Intel rig with the latest i7 7700K in it. And I'm gonna find out if the new 1800X is any good and if it's worth buying. So the good news is that AMD is finally back in the game. Their new Ryzen desktop processors are giving Intel a serious run for their money. So this review is focused on the top end Ryzen 7 1800X. This is an eight core 16 thread chip, which I'll explain more about later, that'll set you back a cool 500 pounds. Now that may sound like a lot, and it is, until you consider that AMD are putting this up against Intel's super powerful enthusiast i7 6900K Broadwell e-chip, which costs a thousand pounds. So you're getting a similar spec, what will turn out to be similar performance, that's a spoiler, uh, for half the price, which is pretty incredible. So throughout 2017, AMD is launching three tiers of processors, Ryzen 7, which we've got here, five and three. Conveniently, a bit like Intel's Core i7, i5 and i3. Ryzen 5 and 3 are gonna offer mid-range and budget options coming a bit later in 2017, whereas Ryzen 7, which is out right now, is aimed at enthusiast gamers, video editors, workstations for can designers, and other power users. Now within the Ryzen 7 family, you've got this, the most powerful flagship 1800X, which is the one I'm reviewing today, followed by the 1700X and then the 1700. They all have eight cores and 16 threads, but the latter two have slightly lower core clock speeds and are also a little bit cheaper. Now the reason everyone's getting quite excited about Ryzen is because it's built on AMD's new smaller 14 nanometer Zen architecture. Now there's quite a lot of interesting and very technical developments with the new design, but the headline is AMD have increased the number of instructions per clock or IPC by a whopping 52% over their previous chips, which basically means these things work a lot harder, they can do a lot more processing in less time. And then you've got the X part in 1800X, which stands for XFR or Extended Frequency Range. This basically means the chip can automatically overclock itself beyond its four gigahertz boost, but only slightly uh, by around like 100 megahertz. It's not a great deal. And that's assuming you have a good cooling system. For me, there are two big questions surrounding the 1800X. One, how useful is having an eight core 16 thread chip? And what's the impact on having a relatively low compared to Intel's chips four gigahertz clock speed? What's the impact in games and applications? Well, I'm gonna find out. I'm putting this 500 pound 1800X up against Intel's 1,000 pound i7 6900K and 350 pound brand new Kaby Lake i7 7700K. Although I should mention, since I don't actually have the 6900K because it's so bloody expensive myself, I am using data gathered from a number of different third party benchmark results with a similarly spec test rig. So I've got my AMD rig right here and housed inside this Cooler Master Mastercase Pro 6 case. I've got the 1800X, water cooled by the Cooler Master Master Liquid 240 on the new AM4 socket MSI X370 X Power Gaming Titanium motherboard, along with an MSI GTX 1080 graphics card, 32 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM, and a 1000 watt Cooler Master V1000 power supply. So this is a pretty beefy rig and there shouldn't be any bottlenecks for the 1800X. If you wanna build one similar to this, you can find links for all of these components in the description below. And a big thanks to AMD, Cooler Master, Crucial and MSI for helping me get all the components together for this build. So let's kick things off with the Cinebench R15 benchmark. The 1800X scored 157 in a single core bench, which is faster, albeit by just 2%, than Intel's 6900K, which as I say, costs twice as much. But then in the multi-core benchmark, the 7700K goes from first to last with the 1800X coming out on top with a score of 1620, 3.5% faster than the 6900K. So while it may only be a small difference, the 1800X beats the 6900K in both single and multi-core performance Cinebench tests, which is very impressive. It's half the price. Temperatures are pretty impressive as well. The 1800X never went above 73 degrees under load using water cooling. So that's Cinebench, but for me as a video producer and a YouTuber, the most important benchmark is to see how well it performs in Adobe's Premiere Pro. And after thoroughly testing the 1800X, I found that it's pretty much neck and neck with the i7 7700K in exporting H.264 1080p footage, 
but about 4% faster when exporting 4K footage. Now, as I say, I don't actually have the i7-6900K to directly test it against, but other review data suggests on average, Intel's chip is between 8 and 10% faster than the 1800X exporting 1080p and 4K footage. So on the whole, the 1800X performs well in Premiere and is an excellent chip for video editing, but the 6900K is still faster and the cheaper 7700K is only a few percent slower on average. So pretty good so far, but what about gaming? Well, I've put together some very pretty graphs just for you guys, everyone loves a good graph. So on the whole, the Ryzen 7 1800X does lag behind Intel when it comes to gaming, but in no way does that mean Ryzen and the 1800X are bad for gaming, it just doesn't quite match the i7-7700K, which is of course the fastest enthusiast chip for gaming you can buy right now. So given AMD's basically come out of nowhere, they're right up there with Intel now and providing some great competition, even if Intel does have an advantage in some areas. As for overclocking, well, all Ryzen CPUs have their clock multipliers unlocked, unlike Intel, where you actually have to go out and buy the K version to be able to overclock it. But unlike Intel's chips, it is difficult to overclock these Ryzen chips beyond more than an extra 100 or 200 megahertz, and that's with some pretty fancy water cooling. Overclocking itself also disables the auto boosting XFR feature, so whether you go for the manual or the auto overclock, you won't get the 1800X past maybe 4.1 gigahertz. So, giving a verdict on the 1800X is a bit tricky. It's a great all-round productivity chip that's still good for gaming, but not the best. But that should hopefully get better as developers optimize their apps and games for more cores and more threads and things like DX12. So in the long term, AMD could be onto a winner. Versus the i7-6900K, it's an absolute no-brainer at half the price for essentially the same performance, give or take a couple of percent. AMD have really disrupted that high-end market. But if you remove that £1,000 Intel comparison, it does become a bit harder to recommend against the likes of the i7-7700K, which is £350, 150 less than the 1800X. But of course, we've also got the 1700X and the 1700, as well as Ryzen 5 and 3 coming soon. So that's going to be really interesting to see how well they perform against Intel's mid-range chips. So the 1800X is a great all-round chip, but it isn't cheap. But for me, the best part is that AMD are firmly back in the game and bringing some proper competition to the processor market, which is good for everyone. So I hope you found that helpful. If you want to find out more or buy any of these, you can find links in the description below. And let me know your thoughts on Ryzen and the Intel versus AMD debate in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.